Kim for Winnie TV at Apex 2019 in San Diego. I'm joined by Craig and Ken from the Comet Group. Now the Comet Group um, also has a wholly owned subsidiary called Exlon. Exlon is here, very present at um, Apex. So I'm going to start with you, Craig. Just okay. give us a an overview of what's new and what's going on at Exxon at the moment. Well, Kim, first, it's a pleasure to be in San Diego. I was in uh, Manhattan uh, last Monday where when I landed it was uh, seven degrees. So for California, that's uh, polar cold. Uh, we, we just stopped moving. That's absolute zero for somebody from California. But uh, it's great to be here. It's uh, nice to see you again. And uh, yeah, so Exxon. So, uh, last year, as I think everybody knows, was a tremendous product year for our company. We introduced uh, six new machines at Prototronica, a huge show in, in, uh, in uh, Europe. And, um, and so we, we have some uh, more things in the hopper that we're not uh, quite ready to talk about yet. Uh, but you can imagine the product folks are taking a deep breath right now. And uh, one of the things that is uh, certainly a focus uh, on the sales side, we just recently announced a, a global VP of sales where we're consolidating all sales for all segments under one wonderful woman named Barbara. And you'll be hearing more about her, her in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is Exelon has always had terrific service. Mm -hmm. And so this year when we take a little bit of a breath from product development or introductions, well, we have a few cool things in the hopper. Uh, it's to, to really uh, completely finish filling out and make sure we maintain the service level that we have, uh, our customers have enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Ken here to my left is just doing an amazing job uh, making sure that happens. And you know, service is in the trenches because customers rarely call and say, everything's fine, I don't need you. Right? They need help. And so you need to have an organization that's very service oriented. And, uh, and Ken is just doing an amazing job with that. And it's interesting because there, at a show like this, you see a lot of products. A lot of companies are very much focused on their products. And sometimes service is one of those, I don't really want to say afterthoughts, but maybe it is sometimes an after or an additional thing that you offer. But to be a true service company requires more than just having great uh, products. So how do you build that sort of uh, yeah, service excellence and branding as a company that offers that sort of service? It's a great question. I mean, typically everyone says, like you say with service, it's that necessary evil, right? It, it, what do you mean my machine's gonna break down? Mm. Well, that's really, it's really not, it's so much more than just break, fix today. It's really about solutions. Everything we deliver is a solution. It's all about the upgrades, the, what the system delivers, you know, using that system that it's optimal uh, the positions. And what you really wanna focus on is that, look at it from the customer's perspective. Okay, and really that's what you have to do. You have to be very customer centric. And what everything we've done over the last two years or so is really concentrating on building an infrastructure that makes us customer centric from building into like Salesforce service cloud so we can get to, customers can contact us much easier, right? Both by phone and by email. So it's really making it easier for them to contact us. And then your response times and looking at it from their perspective, what is so mission critical to them? Seeing it so it's not just that break fix, it's how does that system when it's down how does that impact their business and everything that they're trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. So we have really rolled everything back to say, listen, we don't want to look from the outside in, we need to look from the inside out. And to sit down with customers and, to, and when you sit with them, it's really important to listen to them. It's not so much what I can deliver to you, it's what do you need from me? How do I make your job easier? So we've really taken a really holistic approach to many things and you know, it's all about parts availability and sending engineers in there that are properly trained and really working with them on the training aspect so they can utilize that system to its fullest degree. And uh, service to me, sales like you're saying, we'll sell the first system, but everything after that typically will come back to how well service handled that. You know, mm -hmm. if you really had that wonderful experience, you, you really remember that. And that's really what helps us to build mm -hmm. our brand loyalty. And that's uh, where we focus so much on it. And I guess some of it is also to do with being proactive rather than just reactive. Don't it, just be there when there's an issue, but anticipate, listen exactly. to and, the customer and anticipate. Great point, and that, that really comes down to building a technologies that allow you to do that. Like yeah. we're starting to build a lot more remote access into our systems, mm. which means we can kind of get heartbeats and find out if there's a potential for a problem. Like what we're really trying to focus on, and even like PCU utilization, it, it said high watermarks. If it gets like a 90% utilization, mm. we know there's a potential problem there, right? Mm. So a lot more systems are on networks today, so who's scanning the networks and things of that type of, it's really gathering those activities. Mm. The other thing is if you could do more remotely, you can grab error logs where you don't have to put a, someone in a car, drive them out there, grab an error log and get it back. 
if you can capture that with like a team viewer, things, those types of tools we're using today, we can grab those error logs, save it a full trip, and also expediting the repair, which is critical to someone who's waiting for their system to be back up and running. So if you had to summarize the sort of um, ultimate customer benefits that, that your customers get out of that kind of culture, that kind of approach, from a not just from a service point of view, but from, from your total offering point of view, how would you describe those benefits? That's a great question. So, as you know, I used to run a contract manufacturing company and a you know, wonderfully high margin business where customers have intensely unrealistic demands and want it all cheap <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, Ken just made a point that is absolutely dead on. Uh, the first machine you're going to sell, I might get a good deal I might buy, and I might like the salesperson, or I might just like the brand. But if that machine breaks more than a couple of times, or I have a problem and I reach out for service, maybe not because there's a problem, but because I have a question, if I don't get answers to that very quickly, my business quickly grinds to a halt. So I think the overarching thing is uh, to, to kind of hammer a, a point that Ken made, which is really happening Exelon wide, and is one of the reasons uh, 2018 was a record year for order intake, is look at it from the customer perspective. What does the customer need? customer-centric sales, service, interactions, what do they need? And if you were in their shoes, or her shoes, or his shoes, uh, what's going to make their business successful? If you look at it from their perspective, then everything else follows. The sales follow, and so really just driving that down, all the way down to the trench type things. Where are the spare parts? Do we have enough spare parts geographically located, as Ken pointed out? That stuff all really matters. You can talk a great game, right. but if the service technician shows up and goes, oh, geez, I, I don't have this thing, yep. then the customer is still down, and I know when I was that customer, my fingers were tapping on the, on the countertop every second I didn't get an answer. So it's, I think really the touchstone is looking at it from a customer's perspective. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing from this is that the service orientation and that service excellent appro excellence mm -hmm. approach is something that you're going to be focusing on in the future forever. as well and forever. It will be part, it will, it, it's almost in now, but I like to say it will be in our DNA. Yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. And this is the man who's driving the DNA right here. <laughs> well, I'm the father of service, he, I guess they'd say. Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got the hard job, right? Yeah. It's easy for us to yeah. talk about this, he's got to make it happen. Excellent. Yeah. And his team. Good. And well, really, the beautiful thing, quite honestly, just to, to kind of capture it all, is that, is, as we all remember, when you were happy with something, you told one or two people. When you were dissatisfied, you told five to A lot ten. Of people. Now take that with the internet. Think about yeah. how many people they're telling yeah. today if they're dissatisfied. Yeah. So not that that's the only thing that drives everything you do. It's, it is really putting yourself in, into the customer's shoes, but there's also the good and bad things that come along with those types of reputations once you have it. Yeah, yeah, but you're doing an excellent job. Well, thank you. And thank you for joining us today. And good Our luck pleasure. with the show Our here pleasure. at Apex. Thanks, Kim. Nice to see you again. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.